Amen. Um, happy Sabbath to all brothers and sisters in this beautiful Sabbath as we um, come together and study the Word of God. Thank God for technology that helps us to keep in touch with each other so that we may be strengthened and, and strengthen those who are, what you call it, are hungry and thirsty for God's righteousness. Before we um, uh, start our service and open our Bible study, uh, if, you don't mind, uh, if you're able with me, in the comfort of your home, if you're able with me, can you kneel with me as we seek the Lord in prayer? Dear merciful Father in heaven, as we approach your throne of mercy in this awesome and beautiful Sabbath, we're so thankful, dear Lord, for your faithfulness upon each and every one of us. Thank you so much, dear Father, for your word that helped us to understand more of you. Dear Father, we humbly pray that there is no knowledge whatsoever in us in order to discern what to say and not to say. But we will fully rely on your Holy Spirit, dear Father, that will guide us and take us through as we study your word. So, Father, I humbly pray the double portion of thy Holy Spirit upon each and every one of us to make it so clear to our mind and our hearts, your will for each and every one of us. Cast out any evil spirit, dear Lord, and I pray for your Holy Spirit to bring things in remembrance. Do you all the glory and honor. Let your name be glorified, dear Father, and let the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We humbly ask all these things in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Uh, we, the Word of God is actually, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a very important message for this time. And, um, and before we we go on to our message uh, this morning. I just want to lay some principle in order for us to, as a foundation to our study today. And the Bible says, as you see in, um, in what you call it, um, in the, the screen, the Bible say in Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse nine, the things that have been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new things out of the sun. It's so clear what the Bible says here. It says that things that are happening in the past, it's keep repeating in these present times, so as in the coming future. And the Bible says that there is no new thing under the sun. Everything that's happening around us today, we might think it's new. We might think that it's something out of the ordinary, but the Bible says that we have to understand that these things are not new things. They might be in a new shape, but these things are not new. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is no new thing under the sun. Even this coronavirus, um, it's causing a lot of uh, contention and protests and problems in, in the world. That coronavirus is not new. It's something that happens before. It might not be the same name or the same definition, but the Bible says we need to believe there are no new things out of the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 15, the Bible says that which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been, and God requires that which is past. So the Bible also that support the first principle that the things that happen in the past and happen it's now, the things that happen in now are already been and, and also the things that happen now already been, it will happen in the future as well. And the last part of this verse, the Bible says that God required that which is past. The question is why? What's the reason why that God required that which is past? Romans chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures that we might have hope. So the reason why that God wants us to know one thing, there is no new thing under the sun. The second thing is that God requires of the past, it is for our learning. 
for our patient in order to keep us comfort of the scriptures so that we might have hope. Let's go through some of the prophecies in the word of God. I just want to read this uh, evangelist in page 193, uh, for the Bible, uh, the spirit of prophecy says, prophecy alone holds the answer to the question of thinking people. The prophecy which the great I am has given in his word united link after link in the chains of events from eternity in the past to eternity in the future tell us where we are today in the progression of the ages and what may be expected in a time to come and that prophecy was foretold as come, as coming to pass until the present time has been traced on the page of history and we may assure that all which is to come will be fulfilled in its order all these prophecies and all these things that happen in the past that god requires of us to not be to not forget those things why it gives us assurance it gives us hope and it's for our learning that through patient of the scriptures we might have hope let's go through some of the prophecies you know like that being prophesied that help us to understand these two these principles in second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 5 the bible says now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our lord jesus christ and by our gathering together unto him that he be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by the word nor by letters as from us as that day of Christ at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come as if they come away they come a falling away first that man of petition be revealed the son of petition who opposed and exalted himself above all that is God or that is worship so that he as God sitting in the temple of God showing himself that he is God remember he not that when I was with you I told you these things Paul is trying to explain here one of the of the of the prophecies that we need not to be troubled by whatever information that other will bring it to our attention about the coming of Jesus Christ why because it is already in the word of God, already in the word of God that gives us the understanding that the coming of Christ will not happen until the coming of the falling away first or the apostasy or that man of sin be revealed or the son of petitions. Another prophecy that we need to understand also, this know also in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 5. This know also that in the last days, Barely time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, posters, posters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accuser, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, traitors, heady, um, ungodliness, but um, head uh, high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god having the form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away the interesting thing about these texts brothers and sisters the majority of god's people even christian and even also those who believe present truth that tend to look at the physical the physical signs around us that to determine the coming of jesus christ that to determine that we are living in this perilous time. But when you read this text, brothers and sisters, these are moral signs in order for us to understand that we are living in these last days, especially the verse five says, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. These are the signs I believe with all my heart pointed to those who believe God and those who believe present truth. There are so many Christian brothers and sisters that around us that have the form of godliness, but denying the power of God that is able to keep us from falling. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 to, 6 to 8. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of war, see that he be not uh, troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and here shall, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And the Bible says in verse 8, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. God put these prophecies in the word of God that gives us a landmark that when these things are happen, we know it's the beginning of sorrow. There's one slide that I'm not in here and one prophecy. It's very interesting about this prophecy. I want uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and the Bible says that, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nation, and then shall the end come. What interesting about this text, it is the last part of the message, and it's in, it says that, and then shall the end come. I believe with all my heart that uh, a few months ago that my brother, one of the brothers that I was actually sharing about this message, about what it means by the end shall come. You know, and, uh, and, and the Bible says that Paul lay the foundations and we build on it. So what it means that, uh, and a brother, you know, like, sorry for mentioning your name, but brother Supi lay the foundation of understanding of this end of the message or end of the verse. And now for each and every one of us to search as Berean to go back and search whether these things are right. So when it's true, we build on this. The interesting thing about um, this verse, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nation, and then shall the end come. The question is what end that we were talking about here? There's no other end, brothers and sisters, when these Gospels are going out. One is the end of sin. When these Gospels are going out, brothers and sisters, it will be revival and reformation to the heart of those who are searching for truth. But another interesting thing about this end that is talking about, because the, the verse doesn't say it's the end of the world. And that's what we need to understand. If the Bible brings verses like this, it is unfair for us to particularly pinpoint what it says, but what it means that it gives us a broad understanding in order to search what is this end the Bible is talking about. And then we went to uh, do the concordance, and there are verses at the end of, of the conclusion of this matter. And but this one meaning of this word end in, in, in concordance that. It helps me to think more of to expand on this or to build on this foundation. It's the word it says, the end, the assessment of man or property. And when you go to the word assessment, the other meaning of the word assessment is investigate. And we already know that we are living in the investigative judgment time. And when the Bible says that, and this gospel of the kingdom shall pout the whole world, this is the sign also of the end of the investigative judgment. Brothers and sisters, you only know and understand if you go back and search the scripture for yourself. I want to go back to Evangelism chapter 193 verse 4. Prophecy alone holds the answer to the question of thinking people. The prophecy which the great I am has given in his word, united link after link in the chain of events from eternity in the past and the eternity in the future. Tell us where we are today in the procession of the ages. All these prophecy, brothers and sisters, it tells us where we are today and what may be expected in the time to come in the future. All that prophecy have foretold as coming to pass until the present time has been traced on the pages of history and we may assure that all which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its orders. 
So the word of God and the things that happens around us, these prophecies, it tells us where we are today and, and rest assured that every single prophecy of the word of God will be fulfilled to its letter. But there's one prophecy, brothers and sisters, I want to spend a little bit of time today in order for us to go through it and understand where we are today. In the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse, if you've got your Bible, there's some of these slides here I didn't put, I deliberately didn't put the, uh, the text in there, so that you may use your Bible as we study the Word of God. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. The Bible says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, married and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Even Christ himself living this principle that is so important for us to understand the things that it's already passed in order to guide us and to for us to be assured and learn from it in order for us to have hope in his word so the bible says as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be also at the coming of the son of man the interesting in this verse, and this is the part of this verse, I'm not going to spend any time on it, but there are more deeper things in this verse that we can spend more time in it, that one of these ones here is eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. I heard so many sermons talking about this part. I heard so many sermons explain what eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, but there's only a we'll put in a short sentence before we go on and discover other things that we haven't seen it before. Drinking, married, and giving in marriage, in this last days, the perversion of marriage and appetite will be open to the eyes of men. So as in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. So let's go to the, uh, to the book of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 6. Let's find out something about the book in the time of Noah that will help us to understand today and tomorrow. Let's go to the story of Noah that God wants us to understand that there is no new things under the sun. And he requires us to understand also what was happened in the time of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 3, <clears throat> the Bible says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men. You know what, brothers and sisters, when you read this text, a few things that you find from this text. One, the increase the population of men. Multiply on the face of earth. Men began to multiply on the face of earth. And then the Bible says in verse 2 that sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they choose. Verse 3 is very interesting and it says why the spirit of God are not always strives with men relating to the first two verse of the scriptures. You know what brothers and sisters it seems like that God just about to have enough of this generation as we learn from the generation of Noah. The Bible says that the sons of men saw the daughters of, uh, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. When you understand that, 
And compared to our time that we're living, brothers and sisters, no wonder why the Spirit of God that will not always trust with men. Not, no wonder why that God just about to keep had enough of this generation. There's only two lineage or generation of men from Genesis to the end of time. I'm talking about lineage. One is the lineage of Seth, and the Bible says it's, or it's the sons of God. Two, the lineage of Cain, or in other words, the sons of men. In the book of uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 to verse 12, it's help us to understand the difference between these two lineage. And the Bible says in verse 9, whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. It's very clear. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For his seeds remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. These the children of God are manifest. Remember, the lineage of Seth, or the sons of God, or the children of God, and the Bible says here, are manifest. Excuse me. And the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So what it means here, whosoever doeth not righteousness is the children of who? The Bible is very clear. It's the children of the devil. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that, that ye heard from the beginning. What message that they had from the beginning? We have to go back to the message of the beginning of mankind, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers was righteous. Brothers and sisters, now the Bible says here that the distinction between the lineage of Seth, or the lineage of Abel, or Seth, and the lineage of Cain, the sons of God, those who doeth not commit sin because the love of God is in them, and the children of the devil who hate righteousness or whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. The lineage of Cain and the lineage of Seth. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6 verse 2 and let's understand what was happening in the time of Noah that it's actually keep repeating in our days. The Bible says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. In concordance, the meaning of the word soul in Hebrews, uh, it says advice, self, or the sight of others. In other words, it's the lust of the eyes. Brothers and sisters, the sons of God knew God's requirement regarding association with the world. According uh, with the association with the, with the daughters or the daughters of men. It was the desire of self that separated them from God. It was the desire of self that separated the sons of God from God, and they choose their way themselves without consulting God. So in this verse, it pinpoints two things that happened to the sons of God of old, and I believe, brothers and sisters, it happened also to the sons of God in these last days. So what it means that they are the self, the self in them. They advise self or the desire of selves in them. And the other thing is they choose for themselves instead of asking God for his counseling. In our individual life, brothers and sisters, if self reign in our lives now, we are repeating the same mistakes that the Son of God made it. Of self, treasuring self is a dishonor to God. The other thing I wanna bring you forth to our attention, brothers and sisters, it's a parallel between the time of Noah and our movement today. I just want to read this, uh, what you call it, um, 
the Spirit of Prophecy Manuscript 129 and 1905, paragraph 6. What happened now that the children of God or the sons of God, that was happening in the time of Noah, so as happened in our present time. Not only happened in our individual life today, but it also in our denomination, the same problem that we repeat that was happening in the time of Noah. The Spirit of Prophecy says that the Lord has declared that the history of the past shall be rehearsed as we enter upon the closing word. Every truth that he has given for these last days is to be proclaimed to the world. Every pillar that he has established is to be strengthened. We cannot now step off the foundation that God has established. We cannot now enter into any new organization for this would mean apostasy from the truth. Brothers and sisters, it is, it's hard to, it's sad to say this, that the denomination is stepping off the platform or the foundation. Why? Because they saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Testimony to Minister Page. 265. The world must not be introduced in the church, the council to the church, and married to the church, forming a bond of unity. Through this means, the church will become indeed corrupt and, as states in Revelation, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The spirit of prophecy says that the world must not introduce into the church. Even our lives, brothers and sisters, we need to remember that we should not introduce any worldly things in our lives. But so important for God's people who are living in these last days that we need not to introduce any worldly policies into our church. But what's happening now? We step off the platform or the foundation that God has raised this moment. A few things years ago that the church, our church as a denomination, searching for ways from the daughters of men in order to run our institution. Um, there's, a, there's a famous, uh, what you call it, a uh, Sunday preacher. Um, is it C.D. Jake or? Our institution went to him in order to keep us, our institution, advice of how to win souls to the kingdom of God. We go so low in that, brothers and sisters. The spirit of prophecy say that the world must not be introduced into our church. The Lord already laid a foundation for us to build on it. The Lord already gave us principles gave us knowledge and understanding in order for us to run our church and our institution. Not long ago when I was in Melbourne, as we have a Sabbath school in our, in our church, not in our Box Hill church, there we have in our, in our conference church, and one of the head elders and the head elders came up to us and he says, we really need to bring in, um, there's a, what you call it, a, a emerging church founder says that uh, we really need to bring in his style of winning soul in order for us to start evangelize brothers and sisters we don't need to bring in the outside or the daughters of man ideas in order to run our movement god's already giving us materials and means in order for us to run or to win souls for the kingdom of god let us uh 51, 9, 6, 18, uh, 86. The spirit of prophecy says that we are in danger of becoming a sister to fallen Babylon. We know according to the spirit of prophecy that this moment is not Babylon and never will be. But it says that we are in danger to becoming a sister to Babylon of allowing our church to become corrupt and fill with every false spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful birds. As in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. That the sons of Noah saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them as their wife, as they Jews. 
It's exactly what happened in our denomination in this very moment. That's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, and the Lord say, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty. Brothers and sisters, even our church today, the same thing applies. It was applied in the time of Noah. It will also for sure and rest assured it will apply if we keep looking at the daughters of men for counseling. The spirit of the Lord shall not always strive with men. Genesis chapter 6 verse 6. Why the wickedness of the world and the church by intermarriage with the daughters and adopting the policies of the daughters of men, God sanctify a people. And these people here are the people who were carrying out the last warning message to the world in order to bring us back to the principle that we, that we were first founded. Brothers and sisters, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Why is the wickedness of man was great in the earth? And why is that imagination of their hearts was evil continually? It is because that they advise or the self-desires of the women or the daughters of men adopt their policies, adopt their way of living, adopt their way of worship and bring it into the church and make it becomes our own. And the Bible says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieve him at his heart. Brothers and sisters, we don't want to grieve God in his heart. It is unfair for us to grieve him while he's providing for each and every one day by day by day. It is unfair for our church, brothers and sisters, to grieve God in our hearts by, by looking or searching for the daughters of men in order to bring those ideas in order to run our church. But God has been long-suffering to us. God has been long-suffering to this world. To the world, the daughters of men, the Bible says that the iniquity shall abound, the love of many wax gold. That's why God doesn't want us to affiliate or to have anything got to do with the ungodly. It's because the iniquities in your heart, there will be no love in them because love it will only comes from God. To the church, the Bible says that in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. The reason why cross darkness covers the people because iniquity shall abound and the love of God is no longer there. The reason why that darkness will cover the people of God or the sons of God, it is because we saw the daughters of men and desire to have their ways as our ways. In Hosea 4 verse 6, the Bible says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, since thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Brothers and sisters, the reason why that the people or the sons of God were destroyed, not because they didn't have the knowledge, it is because they have the knowledge, but they rejected the knowledge because they desire the knowledge of the daughters of men. As in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So as this wickedness happen in the world, as this cross darkness cover the whole earth, God sanctify your people. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us who are here today were willing to open their hearts in order to receive the message of God and let them become sons or real sons of God or people that will proclaim the message of the free angels' message. So God will have the people to proclaim the free angels' message. But remember what it says that there is no new thing under the sun. 
So these free angels' message is not a new message. The free angels' message must happen in the time of Noah. And we need to go back in the story of Noah and help us to understand whether where these free angels' message in Revelation chapter 14 came from. Whether it's a new message was given to the last day people. But I can guarantee you, brothers and sisters, according to the word of God, that there is no new thing under the sun. So this free angels' message was in the beginning, was in the time of Noah. The free angels' message, as we all know, in Revelation chapter 14, and it says that, Revelation chapter 14, I'll read the free angels' message, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that make heaven and earth, the sea and the fountain of water. And they follow another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, it's fallen that great city, because she make all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the, the daughters of men. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And the verse continue on. So the free angel's message is not a new message. It's a message was in the time of Noah. Genesis chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Praise the Lord that has son of God that stand firm in principle. And that's why it says that Noah was found grace in the eyes of God. I hope and pray that there are sons of God, real sons of God, genuine sons of God that will find grace in the eyes of God in these last days. And verse 9 says, there are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We need to understand, what are these three sons? Noah begat three sons. And in the concordance, the meaning of the word Shem means honor, authority, character, or as a mark or memorial. Brothers and sisters, that is the first angel's message there. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that makes heaven and earth. Honor God when you fear God. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. When we fear God, we give him glory and honor. We Give it, God has the authority, and then when we give him the glory and honor by reflecting his character, the character of God, the reason why that we were created to reflect the character of God and worship him that makes heaven and earth. That's the message of the Sabbath. And in the name Shem, the meaning of this name Shem, either our mark or memorial, the Sabbath is a mark or seal of God or a memorial of his created power. So the name shed is the first angel's message. In the time of Noah, Noah was preached, preached the three angel's message, Ham. The meaning of the word Ham is hot, but next to that word is warm. It's a change from hot to warm. And we know that according to Revelation chapter 13, is a condition of the last day people. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15, and it says of 14 and 15, the Bible says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodicea and write, This thing say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither gold nor hot. Warm is not in the picture. I would thou yet gold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, brothers and sisters, lukewarm from heart is a fallen conditions. The second, the second angel's message in Revelation says, Babylon is what? Is fallen. Babylon is fallen. I hope and pray that the sons of God who are here today are not fallen. But the message of the name Ham is 
to proclaim the second angel's message that Babylon is fallen. The sons of men were fallen in the time of Noah. So shall also will be if we desire the daughters of men. Chafeth. The meaning of the word chafeth is deluded or allure or deceived. Brothers and sisters, that's the third angel's message. The, the third angel's message. And I want you to turn your Bible to... Uh, <coughs> I want you to turn your Bible to the book of, of Job, Job chapter 51, or 31. I just want to read this one here, Job chapter 51, or 31. To explain the third angel's message under the name Japheth. Job chapter 31 and verse 9 to verse 12. The Bible says, if mine heart had been deceived, remember the meaning of the word Japheth, delude, allure, or deceive. And it says that if mine heart have been deceived by a woman, the daughters of men, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife cry unto another and let others bow down unto her. For this is an heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the charges. Brothers and sisters, it's an heinous crime of desire the daughters of men. By doing that, the daughters of, of or the sons of God is being deceived. And verse 11, for this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judgment. For it is a fire that consumed the destruction and would root it out all my iniquity. So Job says here, it is heinous crime to what? Uh, to mingle with the woman that doesn't belong to us. But the sons of God saw the daughters of women and they desire it. And the Bible says that they've been deceived. The third angel's message is to know that the, the condemnation to those who've been deceived receive the mark of the beast and the number of his name. The third angel's message, the three angel's message, followed by the fourth angel's message of Revelation 18. And that fourth angel's message is Noah himself. The meaning of the word Noah is comforted. If you go to the book of John chapter 14, got your Bible there with you. We need to use our Bible. I'll go to the book of, of John chapter 14 and verse 26. The Bible says, 26, but the comforter, or the comforter who comforted, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remember, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the meaning of the word Noah is comfort. There's a comforter, or the Holy Spirit will come in and to comfort us in the word of God. The other meaning of the word Noah is rest. It's rest. I want you to turn your Bible to the, to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15 to 20. The Bible says, until the Spirit be poured upon us, until the comforter, or the meaning comfort, be poured upon us, and that is the following of the latter rain from on high, and the wilderness be fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for forest. The judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in peaceful, in peaceful habitation, and in sure dwelling, and in quiet resting. So the meaning of the word Noah is comfort or to come be comforted is the word of the Holy Spirit and also resting. We will find rest for our souls when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will fall upon us. Brothers and sisters, that is Revelation chapter 18, the fourth angel's message followed by his three sons, the three angels message in a time of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. 
for pressing close to the antediluvian world is the closing of the ark. For pressing closing on this world is the closing of Christ's ministration in the heavenly sanctuary. Michael stands up, mercy no longer. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. He that is just, let him be just still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. The Bible says that when Michael shall stand, there shall be a, a time of trouble such as never there was a nation in, even to that, things, that same time. Brothers and sisters, the same thing happened to the entity living world. When probation closed, when the closing of the ark, the judgment of God came upon them. Want you to turn your Bible, go back to Revelation chapter 24, please. Revelation chapter 24 and verse 38 and 39. Revelation chapter 24 and 38 and 39. Another interesting point today. And it says, for as in the days of Noah, that word, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, married and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Knew not, knew not what? Brothers and sisters that knew not, that what happened here is that they didn't know that their probation is close. Let me read to you the Spirit of Prophecy in First Spirit, uh, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, 72, Paragraph 2. And angels is seen by the scoffing multitude descending from heaven, clothed with the brightness like the lightning. He chooses the he chooses that massive outer door and then take, takes his course upward to heaven again. Seven days were the family of Noah in the ark before the rain began to descend upon the earth. In this time, they were arranging for their long stay while the water should be upon the earth. And these were days of blasphemies, memorment by the unbelieving multitude. The spirit of prophecy here that even the, the anti-deluvian world, they saw the angel glows with brightness like the lightning close the door, but they still didn't believe. They still didn't believe. What it says in, in the Bible, that they knew not what, that their preparation is close. The, the spirit of prophecy says close with brightness like the lightning. It's a familiar language. And that language you can find in Revelation chapter 18. Those who proclaiming the, the free angels' message were accompanied by an angel that have the brightness that his brightness covered the, old, the whole earth. And Alan White asked a question that what makes the proclamation of the free angels' message so powerful is the accompanied by the fourth angels' message, is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But even that, that angels came to the ark, but they didn't believe. As in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. What happened, brothers and sisters, in the last days? God's people, their brightness will lighten the whole world. God's people will clothe with the brightness of the righteousness of Christ. So as Moses, when he came down from Mount, from Mount Sinai, but the problem is, brothers and sisters, the world will not recognize it. Even your family member will not recognize it if they choose the children or the daughters of men and live their life according to the desires of self. The spirit of prophecy, and forgive me, I'll paraphrase this statement, it says that the latter rain or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will fall around us but the wicked will not recognize it or nor receive the latter rain. So in these last days that God's people, genuine sons of men, will clothe with the brightness or the latter rain or the character of God, that their brightness will lighten the whole world, but the sons of men that desire the daughters of women will not recognize it. Or more sadly, they will not receive it. But it's very important for us to receive the righteousness or the latter rain in this time. But of the day and the hour of Christ's second coming. So I want you to go back to Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 24. And I want to go back a little bit of uh, what you call it, verses before that. And in verse 36, the Bible says, But of the day and the hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. My question is, did no one know the day of the flood? The answer is yes. When you go to Genesis chapter 7, verse 4, it says that when God heard the voice of God say, No, come into the ark. Then when no one was in the ark, the door shut. Close the probation to the outside. And from then, and God says to Noah, Seven days from now, the flood will come. After the close of probation, Noah's in the ark. God in his voice says, seven days from now, the flood will come. So no one knew the day of the flood. My question is, does God's people in this last day will know the hour and the day of Christ's second coming? Those who are having the seal of God, those who receive the latter rain, on the other words, according to Revelation chapter 14, is 144,000. Do they know the day and the hour of Christ's second coming? The answer is, of course, brothers and sisters, of course. Can you prove it? Yes. From the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy. Mark chapter 13, verse 31. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father only. You know what, brothers and sisters? Very interesting is, is the word knoweth. The right, the right reading of that verse is knoweth is means to make known the hour and the day of the coming of the Son of Man. The verse says here, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man or man cannot make known the day and the hour of Christ's second coming. No, not the angels. Yes, of course, the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son. But Jesus Christ have the same mind, the same understanding, same reason, same thought, same desire with the Father. How come he didn't know if, according to the verse, that we will never know the day and the hour of Christ's second coming? That's why, brothers and sisters, the right interpretation of that verse is to make it known the hour and the day of coming of the Son of Man. There's two responsibilities. There's a few responsibilities pertaining to God the Father only. And one of those responsibilities you'll find in Matthew chapter 23, verse 20, verse 3. <clears throat> you know the mother, very good mother, so much love for his two sons, for her two sons. They came to Jesus Christ and says, I persist in that my, my two sons can sit on your right hand and on your left hand. And that was the desire of this woman, the desire of a good mother. And Jesus says, and he said unto them, ye shall deed, drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand, or on my left is not mine to keep. Jesus Christ knew the responsibility belongs to his father, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Jesus knew the responsibility of who to sit in the right and left belongs to God the Father. Another responsibility that you will find in the book of Mark chapter 13, verse 32 is to make known the day and the hour of his son's coming. Jesus is not his responsibility to make known the hour and the day of his coming. It's his father's responsibility to make known the hour of his coming. To who? To make known to who? To those who have patience of the saints. To those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. To the sons of men that are not desire the daughters of the world. That those who are sons of men who are genuine and faithfully to stand up for the pillars of our faith that this moment were first founded. That they recognize and understand God's requirement of our association with the world. Those what they call 144,000. In, in Great Controversy, page 640, paragraph 2, the voice of God is heard from heaven declaring the day and the hour of Jesus' coming and delivering the everlasting covenant to his people. 
Those who hear this voice, brothers and sisters, this is after the close of perfection. The time of trouble as it comes, that God's people are already received the latter rain right before the close of perfection. So now they have been privileged to hear the voice of the Son of to hear the voice of God, the Father, to declaring the day and the hour of Jesus coming and delivering the everlasting covenant to his people like pearls of loudest thunder. His words roll through the earth that Israel of God stand listening with their ears fixed upward. Their countenance are lighted up with his glory and shine as did the face of Moses when he came down from Sinai. The wicked cannot look upon them and when the blessing is pronounced on those who have honored God by keeping his Sabbath holy, there is a mighty shout of victory. Brothers and sisters, only those who are shine, their countenance are lighted up with, his, with the glory of God will hear this voice. Only those sons of men are not desired the daughters of women, the daughters of the world will hear this voice. Only the sons of men will receive the latter rain, will hear this voice. And then, that's why the spirit of prophecy says, for you and for me, you live in these last days, as Noah and his household strives to be amongst the 144,000. According to scriptures, there's only eight were saved from that flood. It's a small number compared to the vast populations of men in that time. Eight people from thousands or might even millions of people were saved, received the latter rain. Be safe in the earth, find rest and comfort for them. The 144,000 is not a big number. And it would be surprising if we have that many 144,000 people that loyal and faithful to God. But the spirit of prophecy says that for God's people, for those who keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus Christ, we need to be strived to be amongst the 144,000. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, but as in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. And my prayer is, that each and every one of us who are here today becomes genuinely and faithful sons of God, not desire the daughters of women, but picking up the free angels' message and proclaim to the world that the coming of Christ is near and we need to honor him by keeping the Sabbath as a day of grace and comfort for each and every one of us. As in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Praise God, um, Lavino, thank you. Uh, do we have a song or shall we close with a word of prayer? Um, if you have a song you want to play or Craig has got a song, you can upload a song. Craig is still there. Um, well, I don't have anything ready at the moment. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, we just, can we just bow our heads for a word of prayer, please? Merciful Father in heaven, as we learn of your word, of the history, the past history, that you require us that, to understand and to be our learning, dear Lord. We're so thankful, dear Lord, for your faithfulness that you've been with your people. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for the story of Noah that helped us to understand where we are today so that we may not make the same mistakes as the sons of men were desired, the daughters of men, the sons of God were desired, the daughters of men in the time of Noah. But I pray that each and every one, sons and daughters of you, dear Lord, be desire only you in their hearts. So Lord, as we close our service today, but we pray that your presence may never close from us. Help us to understand your word. Help us to live our lives according to your requirements so that we may receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and stand firmly in your truth and proclaim the three angels' message. To you all the glory and honor. 
We humbly ask all these things with forgiveness of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.